Hello. How's it going? Good. My mic is unmuted. Backing music is playing. This is wrong. Things are working. Got to be something I'm missing. I, I must have forgot to buy alcohol. Oh, wait. No, there it is. Strange. It's not right, people. Maybe could... Is it a leap year? It's a leap year, isn't it? That's what it is. That's why it feels wrong. How's everybody doing? Hopefully well. Welcome to Shay Do Mod. Shay Boomer Shoot. I have a delightful selection for you today. You may be already spoiled because of the clues in the friggin' title. We're playing a bit more Aeon. Is it Eon or Aeon? A-E-O-N or E-O-N? How do you pronounce that? I should have looked this up before I started talking. But I'm seeking to take it a little, a little chill this Friday. Because I have had three consecutive days of heavily interrupted sleep. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why I thought drinking would be a good idea, but here we are nonetheless. Anyway. Where is my game? We get this, should we get the show on the road? Slim, hey, hey. How you doing, man? Nice to see you in YouTube chat. I see you've dropped some Doom content lately. Best of luck. Dipping your toes into the Doom modding world. And a tutorial, no less. I, I, need, I need to re-upload my old tutorial. I got copyright struck on that. No idea why. And it was from Zenimax as well. I think they were- the, they, they thought I was linking to, like, an ability to pirate Doom content. A whole bunch of people got affected by it, but thankfully, it got cleared up. The video got re-enabled, but for some reason, it just it, the monetization completely disappeared. I'm like, she is. I don't know how to re-enable it. Maybe I just need to turn a setting back on. But like, the the option is completely grayed out now. I don't know why. Why? Why is my computer trying to download Cyberpunk? I don't, I'm not playing Cyberpunk today. Pause. 96%. I'll play Phantom Liberty when I've got some goddamn time. Twitch chat. If you're wondering why I'm not talking to you, it's because Twitch chat seems to have a few, um, few issues going on. Renthrak! Oh shit, I just got here. Thank you very much. That notification did not pop up on my feed at all, so I'm just going by what I can see on my preview. <laughs> Anyway, let's launch the game. I've run out of music. Where is it? Where is it? <clears throat> Slim, you doing good? Watch my tutorial ten times for inspiration. By <laughs> far the best one on the tube, both in terms of quality and content. I'm glad to hear it. I, I, I tried to make it as smooth and to the point as possible. It's, uh, yeah. You forget how difficult it is to make a tutorial that isn't... Ech. <laughs> people get very impatient. Sometimes people are just searching for that one thing. Like, how do I do X? Just tell me how to do X within five seconds. Otherwise, I'm clicking off. I get that all the time with, like, uh, editing tutorials. It's like, I want to know how to put a drop shadow on this clip in DaVinci Resolve. It's, it's going to be the tutorial it tells me within five seconds of opening it. Cyber, I'm sorry that the uh, the connection keeps dropping out. That may have been because of Cyberpunk. I didn't get any alerts, but hey, it, it it's not a good idea to be uh, downloading several gigs worth of game while live streaming. Anyway, <laughs> which one of these was I using again? Icarus and also Icarus. Even tied wastes. That must be the one that I was up to. Is that 
the old profile? It can't be the old profile. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be the purest shot of fresh wrath level content, enemies, weapons, whatever. This is going to be the freshest stuff I've ever seen from Wrath, because as I was playing through uh, earlier in the week, the first hub of Wrath, I was like, yeah, this is all pretty familiar. I've done like 90% of this before, but it, to its credit, still felt pretty good. Do not fall. That's a death. I learned that the hard way. Here lie the eventide ways, the land of magic and industry. Now brought down by hubris, Treachery. He said that already. <gasps> so, largely, this is going to come down to which level would I like to try first. I've been playing too much Elden Ring. Those armor shard pickups looked like um, messages. Do some crystal caves. Look up for some beauty. Oh, hey! That's kind of creepy, actually. Like an eye. You got, like, the iris around the outside? Now I kind of wish, like, I didn't look up. I'm feeling a bit uneasy! <laughs> I'm being watched! I mean, I'm live-streaming. Of course I'm being watched. Hexen 3 looks okay. <laughs> Power word wrong. Uh it's gotta it's gotta do a few things to be worthy of the title Hexen 3. One of those things is to be completely friggin' incomprehensible in terms of what switches I have enabled and what the effect of sec said switch was. Double triple points if the flipping of a switch requires me to backtrack th from one level through the hub to a different level. I have issues with Hexen. <laughs> so. Familiar enemy type. Dead enemy type. Fuck your crockery. Yeah, maybe not stab the, uh, the pustule-filled ones. El Guitar Tom, best channel on YouTube? Thank you very much. Is this Dark Places engine? Apparently. I've heard that it's, uh, heavily modified. I've also seen a few people load up... Uh, Quake Map 1. A few things don't work, like switches are busted. It does kind of work. I'm looking forward to people firing up things like Trench Broom and maybe, um... Creating some custom stuff. Friendly Fire, kill a wretch with another wretch. I'm sure I've done that before. I'm only just getting the achievement now. I love those achievements that are like, Congratulations, you started the game. <laughs> Gee, thank you. Ooh, a new weapon, you say? The Lance, you look... You look pretty friggin' sick. I already like you. I have 20 checkpoint tethers. That's... that's some... Um, that's a little much. I should probably drop some. Railgun! Piercing railgun! Ooh, it's got an alt! It's got an alt! It's got an alt, Basil! Bring the tissues! Fuck!
I'm trying to endeavor to use the alt on this thing a bit more, but it is definitely more conducive to short range. Short, small rooms, full of enemies. That's when that's when you do the fuller auto. Also, because it was a little dark last time, I just bump the gamma by a little. I kind of bumped the wrong thing last time. It was the brightness. I should have been bumping the gamma. There we go. I was checking the comments. Because I do check the comments on the archived YouTube thing. There are a few gripes. could fall. That's survivable. <laughs> oh god, landing on one of those might not be. You don't want one of those up to took us. Actually, save ammunition. Oh god, get up. Bio lance powered by drag nades. What is this thing? It's powered by something. Why is it so difficult to get out the water? Up! There we go. I don't usually have this much trouble getting out of the water, but hey. I didn't bring my floats. But yeah, I am very happy to see the the weapon roster expand somewhat. Yeah, get up it. Still, I'm still gaining checkpoints. I've got twenty two. You know what? Just just because I feel about. A little bit uneasy about having so much of these. I'm going to drop one. And now that I've dropped one, I can guarantee you we're going to find a shrine checkpoint. Lock bell, you wash your teeth and you're drinking coffee. Why would you, why would you do that to yourself? That's like one of the cardinal everyday sins. And same with a cup of tea. Or orange juice. Oh, Sorry, you, you just forced me to relive a traumatic memory. I remember I, uh, one day I brushed my teeth and I needed to get out real quick because I was heading to like a university lecture. I didn't have time for, for breakfast, so I was just going to get myself an energy drink. I, I got myself a, a brand called Relentless and it, it was a flavor called Inferno. Because everything was kind of edgy. Ooh, look at me, I'm well out because I'm drinking an energy drink with a with an edgy font on it. I still do. And uh, I don't think they do that flavor anymore because um, it felt like toothpaste. Orange flavored toothpaste. But with toothpaste, it was it was even worse. I don't know why I had that flavor more than once. It's a mystery to us all mystery to me. If I could travel back in time and give myself a forceful slap, followed by just no, I would. This place is a mood. The soundtrack in here is, um, it's uneasy to say the least. I think this is another uh, soundtrack by a uh, High Lord Andrew Horschelt, if I'm not mistaken. I'm always interested when he goes, uh, goes and does soundscapey stuff. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what's going on with this level. I just feel like I've, I've been in caves and caves and caves. I'm just kind of following my nose. Caliber actually mixed a peppermint patty with an orange crush once. Oh. 
At least your toothpaste was not mint-based block. Mmm. Mmm. Power word wrong? You, you got an ad. <laughs> What's an AARP ad? I don't know what that is. Followed by an ad for diabetes. Is the average viewer really that old? Yes. Uh, my demographics skew. Um, <laughs> I mean, 18's not old. Uh, skews from 18 to 35. Actually higher now. Considering I'm beyond my own demographic. And the demographic continues to age. We're getting old, people! The bones will become brittle. How do I get to that shrine? Do I have to drop down from somewhere else? Or do I have to use my knife? We play some knifey spoony. See if we can make it. Did I forget to flip that? I did. I didn't need to play knifey spoony. I just needed to flip the friggin' switch. Not today, ladies. AARP is the organization for elderly people in the US. <laughs> I mean, it tracks that that's US-based, because, um, again, to give you a little bit of insight into my, uh, my demographics. Largely skews American. Which is why I stream at the time that I do. Because I catch some of you waking up. And I don't think the French are all that bothered about me. Uh, all the Germans. So, if you are here, cool, thank you. Oh no, I fell into the water again. You have any idea how long it takes to dry this armor off? Seconds. Literal seconds. I will never get back. Knife is the most useful thing in this game, Vinny, including gaining absurd speed. I know, right? You can kill almost everything real quick with this thing. You might not want to, though. Certain enemies like these. If you're, if you're a little too close to them with the knife, they go pop. And those ones, they go boom. And, uh, in layman's terms, it, it develops into what you might call a bit of an ouchie. Oh, hey, is this a... Oh, it's Jewel! That's interesting. Oh, hey, I'm all the way back to my checkpoint. <laughs> Damn it, this doesn't have an auto map, does it? Urgh. We are now playing Power Slave. It, it, does, uh, it does have a little bit of that, doesn't it? Actually, one of my first thoughts when I arrived at the hub was... Oh, God, not Egypt again. I've had enough of serious Sam. I'm having serious trouble getting out the water. I think the only thing that's going to get me out reliably is the knife. Not ideal. Bit annoying, but I can live with it. Hope if I didn't get stuck. Right, I've clearly missed something. I've spent too much time exploring the caves. Ooh, a different brand of, uh, of, uh, what are they called? Coffers? Fuck. Back to square one. Alright, so, uh, the, the, the Hexen signifiers are on the rise here. Step one is, oh fuck, I'm lost. Is 
Step two is a switch that needs to be rectified by going to a different level. Oh, shit. Line to quote a particular movie. Favorite of yours. Don't worry, nobody actually dies. They just get really big boo-boos. <laughs> How would you is not joking about the Hex and Three thing. Should have known. Should have known. It's going to be interesting because the original hub levels will have clearly had more time to cook. And subsequent levels. Unless I'm just completely misjudging um, what order they developed these. Which I highly likely am. Uh. Alp. Good to see me back. Twitch is not blocked anymore. Fantastic. Turkey, right? Right, so. I found a shrine all the way back here. That usually means... You've found a section that moves on to maybe another section? That's generally how it's worked in the past. I just want to get out of the caves. Alp, thank you for the gift sub. Much appreciated. Well, I cover the Dark Forces remaster. I'll stream it if enough people want to watch it. Oh, God, I keep knocking on things. It's going to launch me into the water. I own another hat other than the New Blood hat. Where did I get it while well, I'm at it? Um, I bought it from the New Blood store. Oh, you mean this hat? I bought this over 15 years ago. At a festival. <laughs> It was sunny, and I needed a hat. Ah, oh, here we go! So, as much as I love the design of these levels, in terms of their, uh, the interconnected intricateness I do find that it suffers from that if you don't make the right turn, you're kind of fucked for a good 5-10 minutes. While you're trying to retrace your steps and uh, remember where you were. Because ideally, in any, in any given boom shoot, or any shooter for that matter in general, unless your game trades on... You know, other elements other than shooting enemies in the face. You want to ideally be minimizing the amount of time where you are not shooting enemies in the face. It's like, as much as I love head-on, there are a few moments in head-on where it's like, right, we have just ground to a screeching halt to do a... <laughs> to do a maths puzzle. <laughs> and I am not good... <laughs> At maths puzzles. <laughs> Numbers are not my strong suit. Riddles! I'm a little better with riddles. But yeah, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I, get, I get all kinds of anxiety with those kind of puzzles. And magnify that by roughly 50x. Or 100x. Yeah, let's, let's push the boat out. About, about 100x if I'm streaming. Because then I know I'm being seen struggling with numbers. But still. Very good. Do enjoy head on. Would appreciate a skip this puzzle. Actually, there was a skip this puzzle kind of element to it. If you spend too long, you can you can do something else if I remember. Someone pointed it out to me. I was like, yes, I'll take the chump exit, please. 
Tony Pepperoni, you've noticed the jibs in this game have a voxel appearance. You're wondering if they've combined voxel particles for a unique aesthetic. I'll pay closer attention when I jib something. Nah, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's not voxels. It's just, um, pixelated textures. I think that's what you, you see in here. I believe it's more the pixelation of the models. The texturing on the models themselves. Like the actual blood splot- blood splots? That works. Blood splats. I'll be like, sprites. I can hear him. Just couldn't see him. There's five math puzzles in Act 3, so it's all good. Ah! Every level. I'll get there and I'll start sweating profusely. And the prompt will come up. Big bold letter saying, what is two plus two? And I'll just have a fucking heart attack. Nah, I'll be fine. I, I, I can at least do that level. <laughs> that level of numbers. I'm not I'm not completely numerically illiterate. Just mostly. Oh, it's a chungus. I wonder, can I just stab him? Yes, I can. That should be the subtitle for this game. Can I just stab it? You know what I've not used much? A railgun. Oh, that was a wasted shot. Boop. So, I'm imagining that the alt seems to be some kind of shield. So, I'm gonna have to find some projectile based enemies. Actually, will it work with these? Not sure it'll work with the zombies. With these, the cyst zombies. Oh, it does! It reflects! But it does also cost ammunition for each reflect. Fascinating. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was being clever. I could jump over there. That must be a secret over there. No, no. I'm Dyson. Thank you for the two pounds super chat. What's my favorite Wrath monster design, fam? So far? I like the dudes with big cannon mouths. These fellas. Mainly because of the variety of deaths that they have. Also, they've just... The aforementioned giant cannon and sticking out of their mouths. I also really like the guys that have a head being held by multiple arms that can pop out, but they still don't die. Uh, yeah, this is some, some good ones. I'm not coming down hard and fast on any particular monster design just yet. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm holding my horses. So I enabled that. Where are... I've already been up here. It's like a very redundant feeling shortcut. Alp, thank you for yet another gift sub over on Twitch chat. Twitch chat? Twitch in general. Any goodies through the... Mm, not sure there is. Let's loop back upwards.
when in doubt, just smash some crockery, you know. If you're feeling bored, it's a new form of ASMR. 10 hours crockery smashing sound effect. Stock crockery smashing sound effect. Yeah, it does it. Up. How about I'm gonna say two. Yeah. That feels about right. That feels good. Oh shit. I didn't expect to be going back down. Backed up into the geometry a bit. Oh, I love that it pierces. That is definitely one of my favorite things about it. That, that's that's a hallmark of, of a good railgun-esque weapon. Sure, it's got to have that real good, powerful... Just... Pew, bolt. But... Extra points if it pierces enemies. Nothing quite like m lining up multiple enemies in a row and just having to go pop, 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 pop. The only way that you could make that more satisfying if you did a kind of like, um, like a halting effect. I think they do it in ultra violence. Ultra violence? Ultra kill. I'm not that drunk yet. Where uh, I think when you do like a coin punch, there's like a pause in the animation just to accentuate the hit where it goes and then it flies off. Something that always feels good is when you accentuate the hit, which is easier to do when it's a single player thing. So imagine like the railgun bolt. Imagine if for every strike there was just a slight halt where you could just enjoy the strike of the projectile on the enemy and then move forward and then another one and another one and another one. Neuron activation for me. I, I did something that once I started noticing. I just wanted more of it. I'm like a crack addict for that kind of animation stuff. Got to accentuate the hits. Is this on consoles, more specifically PlayStation? Uh, PlayStation 1? No. I think they had trouble getting Quake working on that. Actually, no, they got Quake 2 working on the OG PlayStation. It was a very cut-down version. I can't remember if it was anything like the N64 version of Quake 2. That, that's an interesting one. That's a curiosity. It actually came bundled with the remaster recently. I'd advise checking it out. It's a, it's a real... Real interesting play. It reminds me, if anything, of, like, um... Star Fox, Lilith Wars, like the uh, the over <laughs> the over map between levels. It's it's absolutely like uh, Lilith Wars and Star Fox. <sighs> Fear's particle cannon doesn't just penetrate enemies, but turns them into charred skeletons. That's another that's another all timer. The the Fear particle cannon. I absolutely friggin' love that weapon. Now I've done an unfortunate thing here. I've, I, I started to enjoy talking about something, which meant I wasn't entirely paying full attention to whatever direction I was going in this level. Uh, and if, if I may, if I may be so bold, I would say that a criticism of this level so far is a lot of the corridors look the same. There we go. Good. Oh, I like this. A little bit of destructibility. Oh. I'm pretty sure you can boop this fella in like two with the blade. I say the blade is ridiculous. I'm going to drop a tether because I, I screwed up a bit. 
I may not be so bold, not Well, I'll just take those words back then. Yep. There, it's like I never said it. Peter, uh, glad to see I'm finally giving Quake a try. Joke's on you, I have actually tried Quake a few times on here. I'll have you know. You just weren't invited to the party. No offense. It was an open party. Right, I need to get some of this goddamn health back. Ah! Oh. Fine. I've been a bit of a slapdash. Been a bit. I've been a bit slapdash. A little bit lackadaisical. Potentially even a bit of a giggle puss when it comes to uh, navigating this level so far. Assuming this is a more modern engine, candescence making an auto map is kind of tricky. That skill issue. <laughs> You can do it in Doom, you should be able to do it in Quake. This this comes from a position of absolute ignorance, by the way, so um, you know. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I need I need I need to be a little bit more on the ball for that room. Ugh. The penetrator in fear is another good weapon. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a great combination of the ragdoll effects. Basically, if 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 some of you out there have not played fear, please. Give it a go. Some absolute primo shooting. That and the slow mo. The slow mo. Ooh. Ooh. It is the source. Uh, uh. Oh, Trump, hey! Still got life siphon. Wonder why these doors haven't opened. Ah. I like it when they're real patient like that. You know, the, the ambush door opens and they just politely wait inside. This thing doesn't let me get away with, um, having empty weapons. Some games are real generous, and they'll say, you know what? It's fine. We'll skip that weapon. Don't worry about it. We'll just put a weapon that actually has bullets in your hands. This, this, this is like, no, no, you need to remember how many bullets you have. Friggin' chump. I'm not doing too good, am I? Lion, those caco replacements uh, have too many mouths. And you must scream. They make you feel genuinely uncomfortable. <laughs> and you're fine with the pain elementals in Doom 64? Wow, that's saying it. That says a lot. 
Oh, fuck. Wait. That's the start of the level. No. Uh. Oh, fuck. Why did I go back to the start of the level? That's not good. Can I reload a soul tether or not? Oops. F9, maybe? F8? Nope. F6? F5? F4? Ooh. F3? Alt F4. I called it. Someone, someone, yeah, someone posted it just. Hey, F3. Thank you, player 10. I can just hear these enemy noises, and I'm wondering if there's like a breakable wall or something. Yeah, I'm gonna go on and say that this level has not been, um... Spectacular. Personally. That's not just because I'm bad at it. It certainly plays a part. <laughs> They're real fast with the, uh, with the projectiles. And it's that, that, that thing where they just kind of freak out and then charge you. That, uh, Bro, I certainly get that sense of unease. Right, we're in a good position now. I'm finally building up that overhealth, which is the whole point behind me using the siphon to begin with. I think I just needed a significant warm-up period for this. Can you run this game without a graphics card, Sipo? Uh, depends if you have dedicated onboard graphics. Depends on your CPU. What are you running? Did the developers change the save system? No, you still have to plant them. But you get so many that it almost doesn't matter. Then you get mid-level shrines that uh, recharge your health completely.
Right. Finally feel like I'm making some progress. I thought I heard an enemy spawn noise, but I just didn't know where they were. Sixteen health. Candescence, you're mulling over how to make a non-violent FPS satisfying. Check's quest uh, <laughs> might be a terrible example. So in Check's quest, you're just teleporting enemies away, right? You could make it so the process of teleporting people away looks violent, but actually isn't. The first thing that springs to mind, you know the... Oh, actually, I can't remember the name of these enemy types. In like a Halo 4 and Halo 5, I want to say they're called Praetorians, but they're not called Praetorians. They look like, uh, like alien robot people. The way they, like, phase, fizzle out of existence. Maybe a teleport effect like that. Fashion Police does uh, non-violent uh, takedowns as well. Where they're, they're made fabulous when you uh, shoot them enough. Yeah. <laughs> Prometheans, that's the name of the, the Halo things. Thank you, Cyber. Damn it. It was a poor idea. You know what? I popped a friggin' life siphon. And there was a shrine right there that gives me 100 health. I just need to find a few more enemies just to... Oh, it ran out! <laughs> But yeah, this is probably one of the most crisscrossiest levels I've played in uh, Wrath so far. Seven health. Man, I am always on the back foot in this level. Titanic, am I playing through Dark Forces Remastered after that? That's, uh, this is a common one that keeps popping up. I, I would like to. I'm a big fan of Dark Forces. Whatever. Uh, I'm just not sure where I'd fit it in my schedule. I mean, I'm largely playing this because it, uh... Right time, right place kind of thing. And I could start a playthrough when it released on Tuesday. Might as well continue it today. But, uh, as for Dark Forces... Eh. It may be slotted in next Friday if people would like to see me play it. Or if I've got time, even on Tuesday. Look out. Who knows? Anything I'm looking forward to this year? Loads. Too many to remember, to be honest. Well, I've got the wish list. That's so why I've got my Steam wish list, so I don't have to remember. I just uh, go, ooh, that looks neat, and uh, add it. There's a few things out already that I really want to play. I want to play Helldivers 2, but I've been holding off because A, time constraints, and B, uh, server stability. I really want to play Pacific Drive because I absolutely loved the demo, and it is absolutely my, my style of game. There is a, a, a deserves to be better known uh, FPS called Adaka, A D A C A, that recently uh, released an episode three update that I've been meaning to get back to. It's also got like a little proto stalker zone exploration mode built into it. It's like it's like Half Life, 
It's like a Half-Life, Half Half-Life Two like is probably the best way to maybe describe it, like low polyish style, with uh, like a stalker zone mode grafted onto the side of it. It's good. Check out the. Uh, I don't know if the demo is still available on Steam, but uh, it's like the demo will. I vibed with it. I think it's nice. I think it deserves a bit more attention. It's, it's flown under the radar of a lot of people. It's got vibes. I think I think that's the uh, the best way to explain its appeal. Oh, damn it. I keep popping my life siphon at the worst possible time. How many have I got left? None. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, chalk that up as another waste of an item. Creative Worlds, thoughts on Wrath so far? Really enjoyed the uh, first hub, even if it was overly familiar, because I'd, I'd played a lot of it in early access. I think it's very solid. I think people are going into it probably with inflated expectations, which is hard not to have. <laughs> Considering its development history, but I think it does what it sets out to do extremely well. It is a straightforward, old-fashioned boom shoot with the dearest sprinkling of extra elements. Like, you know, the, the movement thing that you can do with the blade, the, the use of items. The, the level design is ridiculous, both for the better and the worse. I can, this level so far, I, I I keep saying it, and I think I'll continue to say it, it is an absolute nightmare to navigate because so much of it looks so similar. So samey. I just don't feel like there's enough to differentiate various areas of this level from another. And maybe that's a consequence of the levels themselves being big, huge. Real big, huge levels that continue and double back and loop. And yeah, if you're not paying close enough attention, it is extremely easy to lose track of where you are and what you're doing and where you're heading. But that largely so far is an issue that I would say is most prominent in this particular level. Not indicative of every level. But uh, as a few people have already mentioned, um, it may also be suffering from uh, being late to the party. Back when um, Wrath was slated to come out, if it had, if it had forged ahead at a reasonable pace and uh, come out a lot sooner, I don't think it would have the weight of so much weight of expectation on it. But now that it's come out when it has, it now has to compete with an absolute fucking encyclopedia of throwback boom shoots. And then you got the remasters coming out, reminding everyone how great, you know, the oldest stuff was to begin with. It's a difficult gig. It's a difficult gig. Ah. <sighs> But, you know, one person's fatigue is uh, is not the same as another when it comes to 
exposure to a particular genre. If you're absolutely hoovering up everything that comes out, then yeah, of course, you're going you're gonna to experience a, a degree of burnout. But, yeah. That's not always the case. I feel like it's sometimes a bit unfair to, to judge a game on that. Right, I've got a friggin' locker key, a coffin, coffer key, whatever you want to call them. I know that's not going to be much in terms of progression. All I know is that <laughs> I'm not finding any enemies to kill here, which is my uh, which is my watermark for if I'm going the right way. Yeah, that's the start of the friggin' level back there. <sighs> I could just leave. <laughs> we can make it truly the Hexen experience. I could just leave and go to another level. I think I might. But now I've got the worry that if I go to another level and come back to this, will I completely forget 100% what I was even doing? Logan, you've just finished getting all the achievements in Ion Fury and Aftershock. You'll take a break before jumping into Wrath. Very sensible. Eminently sensible. Is this built on the Quake 2 engine, Godly? No, uh, Quake with Dark Places. But yeah, I can't fault it visually. It looks great. I love a lot of the weapon designs. I love a lot of the um, the enemy designs. Texture work is absolutely on point. It is extremely spiffy. You know, I might have to tap out on this level. It's it's not it's not doing it for me. I'm gonna go to a different level. We'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it before, man. I've heard it before. It's like a broken record, that fella. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> heretic was better than Hexen, Mr. Luckless. I, I am a, an, an, an ironic uh, heretic enjoyer. Uh... I'd, maybe it was the the right time, right place, but I did have opportunity to play like Heretic and Hexen really close to one another, and the whiplash that I got from Heretic to Hexen, just like ah, uh. <laughs> I wanted to like Hexen. I think that's the biggest problem I ever had. I wanted to like Hexen. May as well, does this do the, still do the thing with the levels change based on the order you complete them in? Not entirely sure. I think that was maybe more a case of the opening hub, where if you pick up, uh, you know, weapons in one, it might affect the enemy composition of the other. But as for hub two, ain't got a clue. Ain't got a clue. Oh good, there's no ominous eye in the sky watching me this time. Only back in the hub. Ah, you fucker. Whoa! <laughs> that was a good use of a surprise drop. More so than the previous level I was in. Is this going to turn out to be a case of, it's kind of like the last level you tried, but good? Uh. The flight power up? Yeah, don't mind if I do.
Am I not allowed to bring keys from other levels? That's a shame. That would have been a fun compromise. Oh, fuck. Really went a bit too far up that staircase. I don't know why I was pumping it. I don't need to pump it. Oh, fuck! I forgot to pay attention to the timer. <laughs> oh good, that resets it. That's nice to know. We're still good. We're still good. Oh, it's a blue key. It's not a chest key. I thought it was a chest key. I was just about to say, that feels like a bit of a dick move. Having you get all the way up here and then making you want to go back just to open the friggin' chest. Backtrack, monkey! Well, the map maker decrees it. It's any you leave your phone on the dining room to talk to your parents and all you hear is me going, Oh, fuck! Well, you just got another one, so I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I don't recall actually seeing a blue door. Which may be a problem, considering I have a blue key, but no idea where to put it. Uh, this looks promising, as long as I don't run out of flight. Uh, just about. For all the terror and unease generated by those floaty, multi-mouthed things. They still die pretty satisfyingly. The, the gibbage, the death, is pretty good. Is this still the same level from earlier? No, this is a different level. I gave up on that first level. Rancho, does anyone remember the first time Borderlands was shown to the public? I never really cared for Borderlands. 
I'm glad plenty of people seem to enjoy it, but it was just I never got into it. Me. Oh, I only got one of them. Did I get two of them? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! That's almost as bad as the fucking Dusk Wendigo! At least the Dusk Wendigo, you know, breathes heavily in your general direction before it jump scares you. Ah. Get at it! Get it! I want it! I want it! Gimme. You need the pickup. I want it. I needs the precious. I've been jump scared twice in quick succession. I need the precious. Give me it. I think if there's any other way, I'd be able to do that. Maybe if I go. It was a good idea, but I flooded it. Try that again. I, it's doable. I literally just did it the first friggin' time, and now I'm not able to friggin' replicate it. But any- Ah! Oh! But anyway, in, in terms of Borderlands, I think the thing that stopped me from wanting to really, uh, Pick it up at any point is mainly Randy Pitchford. He's like Mr. Anti Hype to me. I see Randy Pitchford in front of any project trying to be like a PR person or hype it up. I I fucking sleep. He's so greasy. He's so annoying. He constantly tries to force his real goddamn shitty magic into every presentation. Fuck off, Randy. And, you know, to his credit, he has. Where's Randy Pitchford these days? Not front and center. That's for sure. I think they finally realized that he's a bit of, uh, you know, he's PR kryptonite these days. Thoughts on the film? Looks shit. <laughs> Why is everyone old? I don't mean to sound ageist, but I, I am aware of a few characters in Borderlands, right? And I, I just want to know why is everyone old? <laughs> it's it sounds great that you got um th these actors to turn up. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett, the the the, the pretty great actresses. Uh I don't think I would have had the, the characters they're portraying be at that particular point in their lives if you're doing, uh, basically, a, it looks like they're doing a retelling of Borderlands, because if you're going to do a film about Borderlands, you got to go from basically square one to introduce both the film audience to the whole concept of Borderlands. you got to bring an entirely different audience into the concept just to get them on, on fucking board. <laughs> and then you've also got the gamers who are really into Borderlands, and you got to cater to them with recognizable characters and concepts and what have you. And I, it's the same thing with a lot of film adaptations. You get pulled in two different directions, like video game film adaptations, where you're trying to please two separate audiences that don't always have a lot of crossover, and you just end up pleasing none of them. That's always the worry. That is always the worry and always the threat when it comes to a video game movie. And if we taught up how many failures there are to successes, whoo boy! The odds 
are not in their favor. Also, I've not done my customary checkout who's actually writing the goddamn thing yet. So, um, regardless of who's portraying whom, another great thing to do in order to temper your expectations of a project such as Borderlands, check out who's directing, check out who's writing, and check out who's producing, and then just have a look at the credits for those particular people. Check previous projects, check the track record, And based on that, you can usually build a pretty big, robust picture on how good or bad a film is going to be. For example, Madame Web. The second the fucking trailer came out, and I found out that it was written by the same people who did Gods of Egypt and Morbius. <laughs> Oh, I knew it was going to be either a terrible time or a so bad it's good time. And from uh, what I've heard, apparently it's a so bad it's good time. Actually, no, it's it's bad. It's a so bad it's bad, but it's so bad at being bad that it's entertaining. Remember when they hired directors for films based on their surnames? There was like uh, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. And it was directed with a guy whose surname was Webb. His surname's Webb. He must be perfect for directing this film. It's like when uh, Nintendo hired a guy with the surname Bowser and then had to fight. No, they had to prosecute a hacker who was also called Bowser. Why did... Uh, the, the universe is a simulation. That's all I'm saying. The universe is a fucking simulation. Based on this anecdotal evidence, on this scant evidence, I'm just going to say, none of us are real. The universe is a hologram. We're all, like... A large-scale version of The Sims. Anyway. Eli Roth is directing. <laughs> oh, that's a 50-50 if I ever did hear one. Writing and directing. Absolute 50-50. Actually, no. I, that's too generous. That's far too generous. Maybe 70-30. I still had hair back when I first started watching you on Twitch. <laughs> it's over. So did I. Thank you so much for the 72 months. 72 months. But hey, at least this universe has video games, am I right? Uh, everything else might suck, but at least we got video games. I've said this before, but I feel like certain enemies should have a degree of resistance against, uh, certain weapons. Like, the big, flamey fellas with the flame cannons. They should have a degree of resistance against this. The, the poison pustule cyst enemies, they should have a degree of resistance against this. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, the, the weapons are still viable, but, you know... It's that kind of thing with, like, the Shambler in, in Quake. It's resistant to explosive damage, but it's not invulnerable. You're still incentivized to use a different weapon, rather than, say, a rocket launcher. Fifty-fifty, Mr. Luckless is Ridley Scott directing your movie. The man has a one-to-one -one ratio of good movies to complete crap. <laughs> Uh, there was a run for a while, though, where they were just, they just weren't that great. I, I still have yet to watch, uh, Alien Covenant. I still can't believe he directed that. Prometheus was meant to be the big sci-fi comeback. It really was. And, um, oh, God damn it. 
There was just so much not right. Right, okay. In Ridley Scott's defense. In Ridley Scott's defense. He can shoot a beautiful looking movie. If you want something that's going to look absolutely fucking phenomenal on your 4K Ultra HD, HDR10, Dolby Vision, whatever television, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous to look at. Every time. You cannot fault Ridley on that front. However, yeah. He just sucks at picking writers. I don't know whether it's he he has um like veto over writers and, and, and he needs to be told, shut the fuck up, Ridley, your idea is dog shit. He is a script, film the fucking script and make it look gorgeous. But I think he's like old and successful enough these days where no one can really tell him no and he's just gonna you know go he's just gonna fucking do it. <laughs> he made a film about Napoleon and <laughs> Proceeded to get practically everything wrong about Napoleon. I've heard that there's a lot of uh, big, big, big historical inaccuracies in Napoleon. I've heard it's good. But if you're expecting a historically accurate depiction of Napoleon Bonaparte... Uh, yeah. You better off with a History Channel uh, documentary. I remember a friend being incredulous. It may have been Dan, actually, if, if, if Dan's about. Uh, I remember Dan being. Oh, fucking. I remember Dan being incredulous that I didn't want to go see um, Exodus Gods and Kings, which was Ridley Scott doing Moses. I was like, based on Robin Hood, <laughs> based on Robin Hood with, um, oh, why am I so bad at remembering names just as I'm about to say them? Gladiator. Russell Crowe. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of films I need to catch up on. But yeah, for some reason, I've got a real good memory of, like, things Ridley Scott has worked on. He had, like, Matchstick Men. Uh, I heard that was entertaining. Uh, the... Oh. There was a film with Javier Bardem and Brad Pitt in it. The... It wasn't called The Consultant. The Counselor. It was called The Counselor. It has one of the most brutal fucking deaths I have ever seen on film, and I've only ever seen that clip. But, by all other accounts, I've heard it's pretty, pretty not good. Want to see a film version of uh, Exodus? Just see uh, Prince of Egypt, oh, Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah. Bubba Wolf, he practically boasted about how he didn't need historical advisors and said shit like, you were there? Yeah? Do you know what I'm- This is what I mean about him being too old and too famous. He doesn't give a fuck anymore. He doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to make the film, and he wants to make the film the way he wants to make the film. He doesn't have to, like, make the compromises that he used to have to make when he was still proving himself and everyone wasn't constantly you know, sucking his dick about how great a director he is. And now he's at the point where, you know, he, he's still got a few films where everyone's like, eh, it could have been better. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm Ridley fucking Scott. You're going to watch my fucking film anyway, you whore. I know that's a very extreme depiction of Ridley Scott, but, you know. <laughs> he do he doesn't he doesn't give a fuck he doesn't need to give a fuck and this is why you got to be so careful when it comes to getting hyped about you know so and so directors next film
It was a phrase, you're only as good as your last film. And I think the same thing goes with video games. You're only as good as the last game. I think on, on, on the top of my, off the top of my head, the only studio I can really think of recently that has time and again proven themselves and have earned themselves my absolute confidence and trust is FromSoft. Honestly, From Software is like the only dev I can genuinely think of that's producing, you know, big ticket games that I will happily jump on the bandwagon for like that because they prove themselves time and time again. They know how to use their assets. They know how to produce a video game that... Uh, Oh, sure, they're going to recycle a few elements from previous productions, but that's just... That's just... Efficiency, really. Not Double Fine? I don't really play enough Double Fine games to really, uh... Make that statement. I'm not really a, uh... A traditional adventure game player. Though, I did mention Big Ticket, and I'm not sure if uh, Double Fine would even describe themselves as a Big Ticket Vigi game producer. FromSoft kind of forced their way into, like, the Big Ticket arena. I don't, I don't like to use AAA. I don't like to use AAA, AA, whatever. I, I, I refer to, like, these big fla flagpole event tentpole even games is big ticket big ticket because you need to buy a big ticket to get in and these games need to prove themselves worthy of me buying the ticket but on other fronts uh, yeah i'm sure there's plenty of examples of very reliable studios that, that just constantly constantly pump out the grades Blackbird Interactive uh, are doing great on that front line. Deserts Karak, Hard Space Shipbreakers, Homeworld 3. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've been solid. Night Dive, absolutely solid. But yeah, if anything, uh, I, I feel like the next few years are going to be very important for the video game industry because in the wake of all of these layoffs of the, the colossal fuck-up that was Embracer, I think uh, Saber Interactive uh, got, got sold recently, am I, am I right? There's going to be a lot of studios that need to uh, basically regroup, refocus, and honestly, really deliver on the follow-up projects in order to just straight up stay alive. So it's going to be very interesting over the next few years. There's been a lot of projects that have been cancelled. Some projects that have been cancelled before they were even announced. There was like a, a, a first person like Mandalorian bounty hunter game that was apparently going to come out somewhere that, that, that's been uh, officially, you know, cancelled. <laughs> even though it was never formally announced. Uh, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. And you know it's crazy because even John Goddamn Romero is popping up saying, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen the industry be in the state that it is right now. And when um, when a uh, an, an elder of the of the industry is is uh, saying those kind of things, you got to sit up and take notice. An elder statesman, rather, calling him just a straight up elder makes him sound decrepit. 
and old. He ain't. When did I last drop a salt, Heather? Oh, fuck. I've been ranting for too long. But yeah, Embrace It was one of the worst things to happen to um, a vast, vast majority of the of the industry. They just bought up so many. They, they want an absolute buying spree on the assumption, on the hope, that someone would give them a lot of money. That, that's, that's, I'm boiling it down to the basics here, but that is the reason why. I, I remember when it, the news came out about Embracer buying up all these studios. I'm like, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this. It sounds like maybe putting too many eggs in one basket. And lo and behold! Ugh. Anyway, I'm just going to go heed the call of nature. Be right back. Hoi hoi! How's everybody doing? Uh. Been a long time coming. A lot of these companies have bloated and desperately need to cut the fat and get back to basics. Uh, pardon me. Looking at a reduction of value to cost ratio combined with ever increasing cost of living. Big players in the industry will have literally nowhere to turn to in order to keep the line going up. I think that's one of the biggest, uh, the biggest problems of the modern age. Obsession with line goes up. And I'm guilty of it myself, you know, I've, uh, I, I try to make investments and whatever. You know, I'm getting on. I need to, I need to try and make reasonable investments where I can, and I'm guilty of the same thing. Oh, I should put money in this because line goes up, line goes up, line goes up, and I put money in and line goes down. I just want to kill myself. But, you know, it's, it's a fucking symptom of the age, isn't it? How would, what would you describe it as? Are, are we casualties of hypercapitalism? 
I'm not gonna go out and say that capitalism is bad, right? I mean, it kind of fucking sucks, but... There are degrees of it. And I think we're on the, uh, the wrong end of the fucking spectrum. I think we, we're, we're witnessing the fallout of, um, attempted profit at all costs. And, God... If anything needs to be said, there's uh, there's been plenty of games that I have enjoyed much more over the last few years that have come from much lower stakes, smaller studios. In fact, I'm trying to recall whether I've even given a single solitary shit about most other big ticket releases. I am thoroughly uninterested in anything that Ubisoft produces lately. Like zero. I even to the detriment of of experiences that may actually be good because it was that Prince of Persia game that they released completely overshadowed by the fact that it's released by Ubisoft. So it inherently has the baggage of me assuming that it's going to be shit because it's Ubisoft. Because that's how I associate, associate Ubisoft these days. If it's Ubisoft, it must be shit. Same with, like, Activision stuff. It's if, if it's Activision, it must be absolutely monetized to hell and back. I'm not sure what I was watching, but it's actively refreshing when you boot up a, a big-ticket video game from a, a well-known big publisher. And there isn't instantly a bunch of sub-menus on your main screen asking you to, you know, invest in microtra microtransactions and, and battle passes and season passes. And I just want a good fucking video game. And you know what? I think that's why I've been having an A-OK -okay time with Wrath. And this is why I think I've been, uh more eager to defend Wrath because personally it's doing exactly what it said on the tin it's given me exactly the kind of experience I expect it's not nickel and diming me it's not sectioning away content for a hypothetical sequel that may not actually happen not slapping on alternate modes that are just there to enforce microtransactions. It's not fucking hard. Make good video game. Again, this brings me back to my original kind of uh, big ticket favorite studio right now, FromSoft. Tira, how am I today? Apparently... I'm on a bit of a fucking crusade, but, you know, that's fine. It helps to be passionate about something, you know? Uh, so, if a Wrath is an excellent example of a game that focuses on being good rather than being profitable and for everyone? Yeah. I feel like that, uh, you, you could apply that model to New Blood as well. New Blood are a great publisher. But a New Blood a pro publisher or a dev? Or are they both? I think they're kind of both, aren't they? They're kind of half and half. More publisher. Boutique publisher. Oh, God! Where are you, you little bastard? I know you're in here somewhere. I didn't kill you. Twat. There we go. Oh, God. Fuck off. Ugh. Baseland. Ronsoft fans. Are absolutely toxic. Look at the people who wanted Armor Core 6 to be like Dark Souls. I think that's a vast minority. That's a bit of a backwards.
backward statement, isn't it? Vast minority. I think the uh, a lot of people seem to overstate the uh, the toxic element of FromSoft fans. I think the vast majority of FromSoft fans see the toxic FromSoft fans and actually call them out and say, "Shut the fuck up." Let people enjoy things. Not everything has to be a fucking Souls-like, you fucking weirdo. It's a mech game. You weren't here, you paper fucking fan. When fucking the original Armored Cores came out. Go back to your fucking cave, you little fucking gremlin. Sorry, I I'm on a roll here. I'm not ragging on you specifically, whoever made that point. I'm just, I'm just ragging on the idea of, um... Of the toxic Souls-like fan. Everyone rolls their eyes. No one thinks they're cool. Everyone thinks they're a bit of a twat and, and would rather they shut the fuck up and just play the game. Tranchil, Neo put you off Souls likes for like for life. Have you played anything other than Neo? Because <laughs> there's plenty better ones you could be playing in terms of getting into the genre. I'm gonna be honest. You started at a bit of a rocky one. Ah. Uh. Anyway, I saw Dan Summer. Dan! 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 Hi. I just needed to scroll up to say hi. Friday rant day? Yes, it really is. I don't know. I wasn't planning on having a rant day. Uh. It seriously wasn't. It just happened. The subject... Subject naturally... Coalesced... I'm trying my damnedest as well to, you know, mark this stream. There's a button I can hit. Uh, I've got it on my foot pedal. Where, um... Whenever I feel like I've had an interesting point to make, or there's been an interesting situation or conversation on stream, I, I gotta press the button. And I gotta get into the habit of pressing the button. So I can go back after the fact and find the thing that I half remember talking about. Several drinks into a stream. And maybe, you know, clip it or something. <laughs> oh, shit. The only thing I can ever hope is, regardless of the rant, I hope at least there is some coherent point nestled within it. Because even I'm not sure where I'm going when I start a rant. Uh, I, I'm, I, I gotta be honest, I have no idea where I'm going when I start on a point and where I might potentially end up. I, I just kind of go with it. I just kind of go with the flow. Look out, he's got a stick. Or a knife! Luna Pangolin, thank you for the 50, 53 months, I wish. 35 months. Tira, what's my favorite Doom weapon? Uh, probably the plasma gun. Favorite Doom weapon. There's something about the plasma gun that I I really love. Like, if we're gonna talk OG Doom, or Doom 2, plasma gun. I love the plasma gun. It's like a hose of death. Oh, fuck. Oh, at least I found an enemy. Found a bunch of them, apparently. <sighs> it was a good dark place reference. It, it was, it was that message. I, I fully agree. Every time I see those fishy things, I wish they'd make the murloc noise. Which apparently was a guy gurgling yogurt. Who'd have thunk?
seriously, where is it? I, f I can fucking hear it. It's annoyingly nearby. There it is! Come on. Come on. Come on! Bring it! just didn't want to charge me. It just didn't want to charge. There's another one somewhere. It's still groaning. <sighs> Luckless, I'm big into the boom shoots. What would be my recommendation to get someone into the genre? Doom! <laughs> Duke 3D! Shadow Warrior Blood! And Hexen. And Heretic. Play the fucking classics. Are still good. Tech war. Oh, that's one was a joke, by the way. Showing off now. You need a quote from Shatner saying tech war bitches. Is right. Is is William Shatner on Cameo? Does he have a Cameo account? How much does it cost to ask William Shatner to say things? Cause um I mean I don't have a vast disposable income here. Because, I'll be honest, the the content creation gig is is pretty fucking tough if you're not making you know all of the the viewership sh you know numbers. But I am willing. I am willing to get William Shatner to say something on on our behalf. Should do a tech war stream on my other channel while listening to his albums. <laughs> Rocket Man. And I know it's going to be a long, long time. I I am I am known for for having a really dumb idea and willing to waste perfectly good money on it. I mean, I did buy the domain that was bestquake.com and had it redirect to Quake 2 just to piss people off. I did originally also buy worstquake.com and have it redirect to the original Quake again to really fucking piss people off. It was worst dash quake. It wasn't worst quake all one word. I, I think it's lapsed. Worst quake is lapsed. I don't own it anymore. I only had it for a year. But I, I think I still have I think I still have bestquake.com. It might still be going, I don't know. I haven't I haven't renewed it. Gotta blame Dave Oshry for this. He he inspired me. There he is! Put you out of your suffering, you groany bastard. <sighs> so I have stumbled upon my previous save point. I still don't really know where I'm going. But there's an enemy over there, so I must be going somewhere. Oh! Oh, fuck no. Kind of tired of being cast into the abyss, so I'm going to be honest with you.
Das boss, thank you for the 249 euros. Super chat. Played another classic, System Shock. I sagely nod at your immaculate taste. I'm not gonna lie, I am absolutely friggin' terrible at System Shock. It is... <laughs> it's one of those games that you've got to play and dedicate your entire attention to. Because if you play just a little bit of System Shock and you go off and play something else and then maybe get invested in that and then try and return to System Shock, you'll end up like Gandalf going through the mines of Moria. You'll just get stuck at a junction and you'll just be like, I have I have no memory of this place. It's, it's I'm absolutely friggin' blundering my way through this level, by the way. I seem to be making, like, piecemeal, piecemeal progress. Because I'm still running into enemies. But I have got no fucking clue whether I'm going the right way or not. <laughs> I'm just kind of derping around. And hoping that I'm kind of going the right way. There's enemies down there. Does that... Should I... No. <laughs> it was just a secret. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Line of Perth had happened to you and you played it hard for four days. The lack of map was equally great and terrifying. Hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely harkens back to the era of video games where you needed to friggin' take notes. If I recall, yeah, the manuals for games back in the day used to come with a few extra blank pages at the back of the manual. Specifically so you could take notes. <laughs> so you could write things down about the game. You don't have no friggin' quest journals. You just have to fucking write it down and remember it. This is the same level I started the stream with, Player 10. That's the second time you've asked that question. No, this is the second map. This is what I mean about blundering into the correct, uh, place to be. I have ended up at the door that I do, in fact, need to open with the key I've just acquired, but I had no idea that this is where I actually needed to be. Now, you can take that one of two ways. You can take that as a... as a, an element of very good intuitive level design. The kind of level design that silently nudges you where you ultimately need to go. But based on the experience I've had with the first level in this hub, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it more to a bit of a fluke on my part. I don't know why I did that. Here, I'm struggling to understand the point of the question I'm seeing here in YouTube chat. What if there's a new realism doom mod known as Realism X? And by X, you don't mean the Roman numeral for 10 or the social media site. The first thing I would ask is why? And I'm sure author of Realism, Kinsey, would, would, would say the same. Why not call it Realism 3? Um, and if it's just, if, if you're just asking me what I'd think of a mod with just the title of that, I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. 
fine? Is it gonna be good? You mean a mix of realism one and realism two? Oh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad we're clarifying this a little further. <laughs> Isn't a mix of realism one and realism two just realism two? <laughs> I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to understand the, the question. Anyway. Oh god. Where'd he where'd he go? Ah No No you don't get to fucking disappear. There we go. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna boil down the question for you. If there was a Realism 3, I would play it. Because I don't conceive of any world where I wouldn't want to play Realism 3 based on how good Realism 1 and Realism 2 is. So if Kinsey rocked up and said, guess what, I'm, I'm making Realism 3 and it's going to be all of the things you loved about Realism 1 and Realism 2, and then even more things, because that's how the concept works, and then I will... <laughs> I will say yes! Yes! A thousand times yes! Oh... Uh... It's, it's okay, I just found the question really easy. Yeah, over the over the years, right? I I I found that sometimes and, and this is not I'm not ragging on you or anything. People feel a little uncomfortable watching a stream without asking questions. This happens every now and again. And you, you feel compelled to, to, to ask a question or just to, you know, try and make conversation happen any at, at, at any cost and it, it it cracks me up it genuinely cracks me up every time because it's all right it's fine we can just vibe it's okay it's okay it's fine don't don't worry about it <laughs> I, I just find it a fascinating element of the live streaming experience it's not that i don't like questions tony spilloni it's that if you're going to ask a question, I'd rather it be, you know, I, I don't want to answer this without sounding like an asshole. I'd rather it not be a question for the sake of asking a question. Does that make sense? I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm, I'm really not. I just find I, I genuinely find it funny. I find it interesting. It, it, it's 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 like a compulsion. But the point I'm asking, the point I'm making, rather, is Tony Spilloni. Even if you're fucking around, is you don't have to ask a question. So it's fine. It's okay. Just vibe. You can just vibe. You can just be you can just be here. It's fine. You can ask me dumb shit. You you can you can ask me the dumbest shit you've ever imagined, and one of two things is gonna happen. I'm either gonna ignore you or answer you. <laughs> either way. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I will occasionally take the piss. Because I've got nothing better to do, and this is one of the few times of the week that I get where I get to enjoy myself. And, and, and not change, you know, piss-filled nappies. <laughs> What's the best, best way to vibe, Tony Spilloni? Just... 
you just fill yourself with the incandescent rage of existence and then you just, you know, you kind of let it go and, and then you continue on with your life. It's fine. You know, it's fine. You just let it go. Magic Dan, you like your realism for the one where his partner's 12 hours from retirement from the mod game that gets killed at a restaurant. Is that like realism three and a half where there's a bomb under the toilet? Is he is he too old for this shit? I really want to rewatch Lethal Weapon now. Uh, uh, trying to trigger this goddamn siphon, but it doesn't want to fucking trigger. There we go. So many checkpoints. I'm gonna have to start using them. How do people feel about games spawning enemies behind you as you've moved through an area you've already dealt with? Uh, sometimes it annoys me. Not always. If it's obvious enough, that's fine. But, you know, if they do like the silent uh, ambush spawn behind you, it's not a horror game. I, I tend to get annoyed. Little. Kick a hundred and achieve him for kicking a hundred heads. <sighs> Pillow. You take the piss after changing piss filled nappies, kind of poetic. It's not intentional, but I'll take it. A poet and didn't know it. How's it going, by the way? Hopefully well. Any exciting projects you're working on? No reason. No reason, I ask. <laughs> to, to harken back to the, uh, the, the previous conversation, what if Russian Overkill X... This time you can make egregious parodies about Putin. God damn it! Maybe a power up can be riding a burr shirtless. Or, ooh, here's a special ability. I I've got like a Putin themed Doom gameplay mod in mind that's just manifesting in front of my eyes. Uh, special alternate ability is, uh, it's called Defenestration. And, uh, you can manifest a window behind an enemy and kick him through it. Kill him. And then say it was an accidental death. That's another good one. Uh, Novichok. The poison damage. Also shuts down the entire town of Salisbury. Fun fact. I, I, I went on a, a little bit of an English holiday. Uh down south, as they say. That's not suggestive, by the way. That, that's, I literally went south. Uh, we, visit, we visited Salisbury, very close to the the, the Salisbury Nova, was it Novichok poisoning? It was like basically a, a chemical agent that resulted, I'm not sure if it, it was a few deaths. It may have. By uh, somewhat unorthodox, potentially Russian means. <laughs> and, uh, we got a really cheap room at the hotel in town. Like, one of the best rooms <laughs> overlooking a river. It was gorgeous. Now, I'm not saying we need more of that. Hell fucking no. I'm just saying that's a thing that happened. Sova. I joke, but summoning a window just to yeet an enemy through it does sound like the kind of thing you'd find in Russian Overkill. <laughs> uh, 
Pillar Blaster, admittedly, you want the current year stuff to stay away from the mod. Ah, uh, understandable. Some folks actually thought you're a commie lover due, due, due to the mod's themes. Oh my god. Yeah, people are so friggin' satire and just... Ah, uh, people take things so literally. It's unbelievable. I think I think one of the, the most frustrating things about the, the, the modern era and like, especially like online discourse as well, it's like the the use of sarcasm and satire has, has like withered, like media literacy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there was something that came up with like uh, how people talk about Starship Troopers recently and how people couldn't you know realize it was a satire or something. Are you fucking kidding me? The whole the, there's even a, a thing like Paul Verhoeven. A statement by Paul, Ver Paul Verhoeven where he's like, I, I, I wanted to make it so obvious. <laughs> the most obvious kind of satire of, uh, like, fascism. And oh! <sighs> Pillar Blaster, you love Robocop and Starship Troopers. Good man. Impeccable taste. What's an English holiday, love, being? It's, it's a holiday in England. You riddled with too much freedom to know. It's it's right. This may sound like an alien idea, considering you, you you've got too much freedom and and too much mileage in potentially your own home country. But England is big enough to travel and experience an interesting, unique experience in various corners of it. That's 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 the concept of the English holiday. It's also known as I'm too broke to book a flight to Tenerife. Let's just go to Rill. Don't go to Rill. It sucks. Go to Blackpool instead. I have a theme park. And a water park. A beach. <laughs> the borders the Irish Sea. And, um... Novelty sex shops. On its main street. Uh, Alp, thank you so much for another gift sub. Anyway, I feel like I've lost myself in a haze of, um, of, of rampant interaction. I need to continue playing this game. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I'm sick of these fucking staircases getting absolutely fucking obliterated or crumbling through one means or another. This place needs a freaking health and safety OSHA inspection. Something. This is untenable. This is an unsafe working environment. It's happened too many times now. And I'm not taking this shit no more. Fucking contractors worked on this place. Need to be fined and held accountable. Oh shit, you never heard of it? It's, it's a synonymous with oh shit. In my mind. Like, oh shit, we didn't leave some handrails on this uh, very precarious balcony. Basically, the entire premise of Star Wars is what if a universe existed where basic health and safety um, <laughs> didn't exist? If, if OSHA or basic health and safety um, procedures didn't exist, you'd have Star Wars. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away and with very poor health and safety measures. Oh, fuck. God damn it!
Oh, I hit the wrong fucking button. Ugh. So, if it, do you recall correctly that I played an OSHA compliant version of E1M1 at some point in the stream? I don't know. I, 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 I've played so many things that that sounds entirely plausible. That sounds entirely plausible. <laughs> you know, it's 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 silly. You know, getting back on track with this game, but I'm I'm feeling like these levels in the second hub are even bigger than everything in the in the friggin' first hub. I've been playing this level for what feels like longer than an hour. I know part of that is through my own complete inability to be good at playing the video game, but still. I'm not used to this. It's, it's like it's like being a me seeks from Rick and Morty. You, you spend too long in a level and you start getting anxious about your own existence. It, it starts to feel wrong. Y you need it to end. It's like a weird un inherent uneasiness of a of a boom shoot level that just keeps going. I mean, I triggered the thing that I wanted to trigger earlier, but didn't trigger. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. YOLO! Seriously, it's- Oh! Oh, 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 never mind. Never mind. Never mind! I was about to chastise the level from spawning, you know, just a little weak pissant enemy. After I picked up the sigil. But no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. If anything, you could do with less of these. With these flying enemies, I feel like I'd rather not be using the shotgun because they look so weedy. But it's actually easier to take them out with one shot of this thing than it is to do... That. Oh. <sighs> Are any of the weapons accurate? Just the pistol? Uh, kinda. Mostly. This thing's pretty accurate, unless you're using the alt. This thing. You get a feel for. This is very accurate. It's, it's a rail gun. And now uh, this. Well, as long as you're stabbing something in the face, you're good! No shit, that takes you all the way back to the start. Fuck. Just on the off chance you feel like, uh, you know, doing it all again. Hey, we finished the level, people! Way! <sighs> <laughs> it's two hours, nearly 15 minutes through this stream. And this is the first full level I've completed. Because that first level that I attempted just did not do it for me. Great alchemy was wrought from the minerals of this land. Built to lofty heights of accomplishment by its people. Of course. He's still talking. Their ambitions did not rise as high as they might. Cool. Bob. Ooh. That looks new.
You know, with the theming... I feel like it must be difficult to get things that, um, that feel visually diverse in this particular hub. Oh! I sees what that does. It's kind of like a Void Walker ability. Now, I hope they do things that are interesting with that. Because, um... Otherwise, it's just an interesting way of forcing you to walk through the gate <laughs> to progress the level. Pretty short level. And 68. Interesting. Well! Must mean it's okay for me to go take a piss then. Oh, not the invisible things. Uh, yeah. Gonna kill these enemies. Oh no 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 no! Don't you fucking run away! It's gonna it's gonna increase the time that it takes for me to go take a piss. I'm trying to hear it scuttling around. All right, okay. Oh, it lets you see those as well, I guess. That's pretty good. All right. I'll drop a tether. I'm gonna go take a piss. Be right back.
go! I'm back! Hello, Blasty, you're turning every Russian overkill gun into a Z script and here at the colonel. The what, what, what now? I am so confused. How do I like the Lance? Which one's the Lance? Is that the Lance? Is that the Bio Lance? Love it. It's a railgun. I love a railgun. Railguns are objectively some of the best video game weapons ever. I I'm not sure there are many examples of a video game where the railgun sucks. There's even video games where you don't get to fire the railgun, but it's still objectively fucking cool just because it's the Metal Gear Solid, for example. Metal Gear Rex has a railgun strapped to its side. That's fucking cool. Does it ever fire it? No. It's the implication. It's the implication. Time to buy bestrailgun.com. It will redirect to the Quake 2 railgun. Um, it's, it's, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Fact. See if you could probably find a game with a crap railgun. I'd argue that a crap railgun is no nail, nail gun. Of course it's not a nail gun. No, a crap ra- Let me, let me, hold on. Let me, let me gather myself here. The, the, the words are taking a longer time to come through my uh, brain mouth interface here. I would argue that a crap railgun is unworthy of the name and therefore is no railgun at all. Judge, I rest my case. Oh, that's a dick bag placement. That's a dick bag placement if I ever did see one. <laughs> Calibrax. Yeah, I, I think he I think he summed it up. Fail gun. Rail gun more like fail gun. Oh my god! Stop being shit! Uh. Sorry, I saw something in uh, YouTube chat about Quake 4 and it threw me off. Quake 4's railgun isn't the greatest, even in the same series. Red Faction 2 had one that could shoot through terrain and even wall hacks built in. I say, it's, it's very difficult to make a bad railgun. You've got to go out of your way! to create a bad railgun. Because the inherent concept of the railgun is already so well established and cool. I hate these little fuckers. They suck. Spawn a companion turret. I've not used that yet. It could be fun. Oh, come on. Come on! Also, why is everything purple? Have I got a pickup that makes everything purple?
Oh my god! Good job, I saved. The laser beam makes things purple. Well, laser beam. I'm activating lasers. Oh, the laser! Of course. <gasps> I'm, I'm not kidding. I was completely oblivious about the laser. I thought I had a power-up that was making my vision go funny. Mr. Luckless, you got a bad railgun. Strafe has one as a starting weapon, and it's so crap you have to upgrade it into usefulness. Does it end up good, though? Because that sounds like designing a bad railgun on purpose. Oh, what? Hey, huh? What? I went through many emotions uh, briefly uh, over why I was taking damage. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I've fully recovered. Strafe was kind of bad. I didn't like it when it first came out, and I've not returned to it much uh, on successive updates. I feel like it had a, an interesting idea. I just don't think it was executed very well. It was more frustrating than it needed to be. And it was very early to the party in terms of, um, you know, the throwback kind of thing. And, and also even with roguelite elements. It was very early to the party. It just never quite clicked. And I, I think at one point someone did did implore me to check back with like uh, I think it was like the, the Millennium update or whatever it was for it. It was pre-dusk, yeah, it was pre-dusk. I didn't hate it. I just thought it it didn't uh, capitalize on its p potential. It had a very good advertising campaign. <laughs> I'll remember the advertising campaign. <laughs> they, uh... It was like a kid playing Strafe on the Big Brother's, like, computer. And the game was so epic and extreme that they just start convulsing and bleeding from the eyes and the head explodes or something. <laughs> it was so over the top. It was, it was perfect. It really was. It was a perfect ad. It really was. Almost too good. Almost too good. I'm pretty sure there's a, there's pr there's potentially a catalog out there of um, video games where the advertising campaign was better than the actual game itself. <laughs> Oh yeah, loved the ad campaign. <laughs> I thought it was great. Oh, like, am I talking to YouTube chat? Yes, I am. I am currently trying to interact with both. So apologies if I if I skim over anything or miss anything. I'm trying my best. Damn it! I'm trying my best. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. John Diaper, thank you so much for the 63 months. How you doing, man? Hope you keep him well.
All right, they're using this in a fun way. I'm also not very good at using it. I I will say, right? I prefer when games trade death pits or a teleport back to a safe uh, ledge. Doubly so when you got to put down your own saves, like uh, like in this. How many levels deep am I? <laughs> this is, what, only the third level I've played? The levels are huge! Huge! I be you're okay? Good to hear. Yeah, I, I played, like, the first level, like, on the right in this hub, and it got pretty annoying. I will safely say that every other level has been more engaging. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, like, you want to play this because of me now? You have it too? So it's my fault if you don't like it? Oh, God. Oh, man. So much pressure. I see what I missed. I see what I missed. There's another corridor I could have gone up. Those bugs. You know what? Actually, I, I was hoping that they'd all go fight each other, even if they were invisible, but apparently no. You're right. This is, this is going to be absolutely wrong, but even then, I still have to, you know, explain why I might want to attempt it. My brain wants to say, sure, the sharp bit of those blades is on the edge. I'm talking here! Fuck you! But, still. I damn it! Fuck off! But still. I should, theoretically, be able to ride on top of those sword blades entirely without injury. Let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? Hey, it kind of worked! It kind of worked! <laughs> I'm not used to that actually panning out. Fuck. <laughs> oh, my asshole. Up, 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 up. It worked. I just had to explain my thought process before I engaged in something that may potentially be horrendously stupid. You'd be surprised how often that happens to me. Cyber, you gotta head out. Take care, man. Enjoy your walk. Indiana Jones, eat your freaking heart out. The penitent man. 
The penitent man. Penitent man. Penitent man. The penitent man just YOLOs it. Does this use a modified Quake engine? Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> Dark places, Quake. I should, I should pin that comment. Ah. <sighs> Overstudge with an eye. That was a terrible Connery impression. I'll never do that ever again. I suddenly remembered my Shalami. And then my other phrase, which is by John Rhys Davies in uh, Last Crusade. He's named after the dog! <laughs> Favorite level of the game thus far, player 10? Um, the one where you shoot the things. And you know where you're going. And where you have enough ammunition to deal with whatever enemies in front of you. That's my favorite level. I got like one fucking health. That was a terrible place. That was a terrible fucking place to use that! Achievement unlocked. Kill an enemy while at one health without the cruel Aegis. <laughs> you suck, but not too much. Congratulations. Ah. Uh. Which, uh, which is the more iconic British voice, Kirby? Sean Connery or Patrick Stewart? Well, I'm glad you said British, because there would have been there would have been arguments if you would have said English. It's hard. It's hard to, to choose between the two, to be honest. Sean Connery is so distinctive. Distinctive. Yes. Sean Connery is more fun to try and imitate. Oh no! Oh no! Back in back in the sphere. Whereas with Patrick Stewart, the most I I go on. Imitating is uh, T. Oh, Grey. Hot. And uh, maybe the, the one other line from Star Trek First Contact, which is The line must be drawn here! This far! No further! It's the way he says here! The line must be drawn here! But I, I think on on uh, on average, there are more quotable Sean Connery lines than Patrick Stewart lines. So on that basis, I'd have to pick Sean Connery. <laughs> no love for there are four lights. There are, but it's very difficult to imitate. 
and, and and there's never a good occasion to use it unless you're being gaslit by someone and in which case it's probably going to be an awkward situation to begin with Ugh. One health. Twenty one health. Less bad. <sighs> Connery is Scottish, so you think he loses by default, luckless. False. The question was British. And as much as the Scottish hate to admit it, the British. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's, it's, I, I didn't. I, I didn't make the rules up. I didn't make the rules. <laughs> You may hate the English, but that doesn't stop you from being British. And you gotta live with that. That's ultimately the one thing that brings us up all, all, all together at the end of the day. As much as we hate each other. At the end of the day, we're all British, and that sucks. Well, that's a freaky little turret. You know what? I, I I think that's a fucking awesome design. Oleg, we're all British, even us in the Middle East. Well, Oleg, let me regale to you a little tale called The History of the British Empire. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if we planted a flag there, I'm, I'm sorry, but it... <sighs> You're British now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! And you'd be surprised how many places that applies to. The moon is officially American? Ah, uh, technically, yeah. Though there is, uh, I believe, some arbitrary law that states that no one can claim ownership of... Uh, something in space. SPACE! It's like how, you know, you can, um, you, you can say you've got a plot of land in Scotland and you're, you're officially a Scottish lord or something like that. That's a load of bullshit. That's absolute, complete scam bullshit. The same with, like, uh... You now own a plot of, of, of the moon. Yeah, a lot of fucking bullshit. Earth is in space too. Oh! Curious! You exist here, yet you also participate in it. Curious. I don't know what I'm fucking doing! This level may be shorter than the others, but I'm still no less m <sighs> Still no less mystified as to how I'm doing anything. John Diaper, you want to live in Chippy Norton? Uh, CHIPPING! CHIPPING NORTON!
pillow blasted, don't know what I'm doing, falls into pit. It's almost like I'm shockingly accurate. <laughs> oh no! Resurrects immediately, comes face to face with his firing squad. Oh, like your country used to be British occupied after World War One, after the Ottomans fell. You're not wrong, guess you are. I, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. You, you're now contractually obliged to have a full English breakfast every day. Uh, have an unhealthy attachment with the concept of black pudding as a breakfast food. Uh, endlessly complain about the weather. And deny that frequent trips to the pub do not indicate that you're a full-blown alcoholic. Ah! Oh! Afternoon tea as well. I will freely admit one of the, the finer things about Britishness is afternoon tea. Afternoon tea is fucking delightful and I will sword fight anyone who says otherwise. Wait, that's the start of the level. I don't want to be the start of the fucking level. Beans on toast is an objectively fantastic breakfast option. And anyone who winces at the idea of beans on toast just doesn't know what beans on toast actually is. I I've seen far too many fucking videos lately of Americans, like, assuming that when I say beans, it means the same thing that they mean when they say beans. It does not. We are not the same. My beans are not your beans. Get on my level. Uh, suck my egg. Don't die me when I marry Fiona Bruce. <laughs> Get in line. Right, okay, right, okay, okay, right, right, okay, okay, right. I'm probably needing to go this way. There we go. I will admit, they're horrendously intimidating. It does look like a thing, right? It looks like a thing. It looks like a thing. It is- it's a thing that looks. Yes! Oh, no! What recommended bean type for toast? Branston. Baked beans in tomato sauce. You can also get Heinz. I don't know why this is so difficult to grasp.
This section's a bit of a dick. Okay. That was weird. I think I saw the whole PNG of a sprite there for some reason. I can't go that way! Sigil says no. What does Sigil even do? What the fucketh? Oh, now I can go through. Oh, fine! I guess we're playing random rules today! There we go. Unlock the thing. Fuck! Alright, that... I get the idea, but I still think it's tremendously irritating. You can only flick the switch after you've gone through the, the friggin' void sigil. Oh, absolutely fuck off. Oh, fuck. I looked away for one second and then I'm completely disorientated. <laughs> Did anyone else watch the awesome games done quick? run on Doom Eternal with Marty Stratton pointing out all the issues they weren't able to fix. I, 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 I did. That was actually really funny. It was just like, we should patch all this up just to win with the speedrunners. <laughs> Pineapple, is it wrong for you to expect rockets out of the big gun? Big gun! This gun? That gun? That gun. That gun. That gun. Or that gun. I, I'm gonna assume you mean this gun. Because it is indeed big. Big. It does feel like it should have a degree of, uh... It's got- it's got a rocket- it's got a rockety chunk to it. I, I'll freely admit. But I'm okay with what it, uh, ultimately is. Any thoughts on id software's next game player 10 if they haven't announced it i got nothing to say i say that there's things i could potentially hope for i'm pretty sure i had a conversation with um how by id tech not too long ago 
on that front. I'd love to maybe see a combination of things. I can't remember what exactly I said, but I think it was a combination of, of what you could do with Quake. You could still combine original Quake with Quake 2, considering not just Quake 3, but Quake Champions. You could, you could do a big old friggin' melting pot Quake entry that brings together a little bit of everything. But I'm not holding my breath for it, personally. Or oh, like, cake champignons? Mushrooms on cake? The fuck, the fuck are you talking about? Oh, I didn't do the thing. I forgot to flip the switch that lowered the doobery. Flippity bob. The flippity doobity thingity mibbity lib. That thing. Next game is sequel to Quake 1. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. As I said, though, you could do a great, great big just smush of everything Quake in the next Quake entry. You, you, I mean, who remembers Quake Wars? It's like a riff on um, Wolfenstein. And Oh, what was it called? It was that Wolfenstein spin-off. It was a multiplayer, but they did Quake. My brain's so fuzzy right now. It doesn't even matter. Have I played Head on Blood right? Blig, blig, skibbity bop. Yes, yes, I have. Any thoughts on Star Wars Battlefront, and will I be playing it with chat? No, because chat seems like a terrible way to play Star Wars. Uh, if you're asking whether I'd play it and invite people, also no, because I, I hate playing alongside other people, and it gives me tremendous anxiety. But on a serious note, maybe, possibly, if I ever have time, and if I ever have enough alcohol in my system, Maybe. I gotta admit, at this point, I just want to get this level done. I've certainly liked these levels more than the first level of this hub. But I'm getting a little... I'm getting a little, uh... Little, uh... Little fucking burned out. Seems like a lot of time spent feeling without uh, making progress. I think this is the consequence of the size of the levels. It's easy to go a long time without feeling like you've done something of consequence. At least I get like the concept of this level is I'm enabling three different streams of energy back to the central hub. At least that is giving me some kind of framework of progression. But I'm still like...
wanting to get on with things. You know what? Fuck it. Invincibility. Seems like a good time to use it. Is all that up in my face bullshit? I was about to trigger it again, and then I died. Okay! Void grade! Yeah, I'm just at the point where I'm like fucking tired. I'm just gonna spam all my invincibility power ups. Ah, fuck it. Been hoarding them up until now. Create a small black hole. I, I want to know. That was a fucking terrible usage of it. I can't believe I fucked that up so bad. I. I I should be dead. I should be dead. Oh, I hate these fucking things. I just want to sit still. All right. All right. Try and use that void grenade a little bit more effectively, shall, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> eh. It's fine, I guess. Uh. Fuck that up. Oh no. Yeah, I'm thinking getting everyone to in fight is uh is going to be in my uh my best interest. Eee, gonna need another invincibility, I think. You know what? Fuck this place. I'm leaving. I got the I got the sign. I'm done. Uh 
two. Two friggin' sigils, artifacts, whatever you want to call them. As the sum of my success. I gotta admit though, after after the uh the hectic bullshit of those two levels, I'm kinda tempted to return to the original level. More or less exhausting than Pro Duma. <laughs> less By an order of several magnitudes. Unless something has happened to Pro Duma in the intervening like decade or whatever. I don't even remember how long it's been. Pro Duma will always be infuriating. Honestly, trying to figure out, though, how close were I, was I, to this area's, like, artifact. I feel like I was on the cusp of it, but it was just getting so convoluted in terms of the layout of this place. I was like, I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Coffer key. <laughs> Fish! I keep forgetting that the alt for this thing. I need to hold, to charge. I've tried to use it a few times during the course of this stream, and I've just kind of forgotten that I need to hold it as long as I do. I don't think I killed the little bug thing! Ah, good heck. Blade wins. Blade wins again. Boomst. Wenst. Is it because of one of the pots? Anything more to this area? No? It's just a side area? I was hoping that was progression. enemies by like getting this level done will be a nice little uh nice little bow that I can tie on this stream. Static was the game worth the wait. I think it's good. I think viewing its value on how long it took to come out does not help. Oh, this level though. This level though. This is the first level I started with and it is... Mm, Mm. 
it's got problems. The other levels that I've played during the course of this stream, pretty good. This one, this this may end up being like one of the first levels that you choose during this stage of the game. This is like the second hub, and it's like one of the closest levels that you can pick off the bat. And mm, uh, 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 uh. I say, the, the biggest problem I got with this level is I'm constantly trying to figure out where the fuck I'm supposed to be going. Because so much of it looks the same. Well, that just could be a problem with, uh, with me versus the theming. Yeah, I just I just ended up running in circles and I just had to tap out because I was like, I, I I've lost the thread. I have completely and utterly lost the thread. There are so many little loop backs and, and, and side trails and shortcuts that it honestly gets more confusing than it possibly could have anticipated. Go back up and through the golden door. Golden door. You mean a golden door that requires a key? Because I imagine a golden door might require a key. I have not found a key for a door that is allegedly gold. I, I, I don't even remember seeing a golden door. <laughs> that's that's the problem I'm dealing with. I've, I've been so completely turned around by this level that I... Oh, oh, fuck! Finally, I've blundered into it. This is the first time I've seen that fucking door in the entire time I've played this level. Yeah, I, I, I've just not been able to keep track of what direction I'm going. At all. It's, it's a real toughie. I say I don't have the key. Hey, oh, fuck. Oh. All right, this right here is what I hate about the structure of this level. If you fall down to the bottom through a mistake or any other kind of uh, happenstance, trying to trace your way back to where you were is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it really is. It's so fucking difficult to trace your path back to where you were. Because it all looks the fucking same. Oh, at least it was something they shared. But yeah, the, each, each hub has a different theming thing going on. But um, yeah, so far this one, unfortunately, has a lot of uh, elements that 
are very easily blended together. They all mesh real nice, but that also has the poor consequence of um, having everything look very similar. <sighs> I'm so fucking tired of this level. This this is honestly the last level I complete. I I because it's it's drained me returning to this level. As much as I'd like to go up, I just need to figure out the fucking way to go up. <laughs> kind of reminds me of like the Dark Souls philosophy of um of interconnected environments, but Kind of on turbo and slightly missing the point. There are shortcuts in Dark Souls areas, but they're often back to a central definable point. That 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 makes geographical sense. Whereas this, I'm like, I don't fucking know. Oh, I did it again! That's entirely my own fault. I freely admit that's entirely my own fault. I can't believe I ended up in the same fucking spot and made the same fucking mistake. I am so fucking annoyed with myself. I I I I, I can't believe I did that. I I must have like some part of my brain that's just wired to sabotage. I, I just got this fucking little gremlin in one part, part of my brain that goes, Yeah, press the button! Press the button now, it'll be really fucking funny. Yeah, you'll love it. No! No, I won't! It'll bring- it'll just bring me pain! Auto saved by gold- Yeah, that, that would have been great. Uh, longer before I pressed the button that made the mistake. Thank you, Captain Hindsight. I- I just- pfft. Are the enemies cleared out from the original visit? Yes, yes they are. I've already killed everything. And I got so lost in this level that I gave up and left. So now I've got to retrace. Because this lets you do that, which is admirable. But now I've got to retrace the path through the level after I've opened the shortcuts, which is terrible. It's a terrible thing to have to do. Because it stops making sense when everything is open. You, t you just take like one wrong turn and that's it. You are fucked. Alright, I saved it now. Less chance of fucking up. Jesus. Tap dancing Christ.
god! I like it when it gives me fucking combat to focus on, you know? I'm alright working through the combat, it's just the navigation is so easy to lose track of. It's, it's my biggest bugbear. Biggest fucking bugbear. And again, I gotta stress, it's particularly with this level. I think this level is particularly problematic. Love being other, not signposts. Doesn't need yellow paint. <laughs> not even gonna dignify that with an answer. Yellow paint is not a substitute for level design. It's a crutch. Nor can a level subsist without a decent amount of flow. It is a balance it is a tricky one to strike. And all I can tell you is I know when it ain't working, and in this level in particular, it ain't fucking working. Oh, he died. Never mind. This is the climax of the level because I am fucking done. Keep freaking forgetting that those, uh, flamey enemies leave lingering flame damagey pools. Who'd have thunk? Get back here, you little scuttly fuckwit! Got him. I've got like two coffer keys here. I've not even come across one of them. I need like a...
This is like the most frustrating fucking layout. <laughs> Paul Bunyan, thank you for the 33 months. Ah! This is so frustrating. This level, this level in particular, is so frustrating. I, 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 I can scarcely begin to describe how annoyingly laid out this level in, in particular is. It's such a shame that this is the first level I decided to play for this hub. Actually, no, come to think of it, it's probably a net benefit that this is the first level I decided to play for this particular hub. Because it, it gave me a standard to expect, which other levels handily, handily surpassed. They were a lot more enjoyable. This is just an annoying as fuck interconnected labyrinth that just gets more convoluted the more shortcuts you unlock. And every fall from the top is just this annoying as shit looping route to whatever elevator takes you back to the highest level. I hate it. I fucking hate it. It's a consequence of everything being, admittedly, cleanly themed, but very samey as a fucking consequence. Like I said, I've said it so many times at this point that I'm, I'm fucking tired of mentioning it. So fucking tired of saying it. At least it's a shrine now. You know what? I'm going to drop one of these. Maybe that's what these are for. These are in anticipation of this kind of bullshit. I'm, I'm never 100% sure, by the way. With how I'm navigating these levels, I am never 100% sure whether I'm going the right way. Ever. Like the only time I ever have any certainty is when I run into an enemy. And even then, that is not entirely a great signpost for what I'm doing. I just want to get out. I want to get out. Oh, could be doing the Turok thing where enemies respawn, meaning you can't rely on enemies. That that that's one of the biggest friggin' pain points I had recently with replaying the original Turok. I've been I've been trying to get through that for a while, but it tr. I understand what they were doing. They were trying to keep it interesting by making sure you still have stuff to fight even if you lose your progress, even if you lose what direction you're trying to go. And that just <laughs> makes you lose your sense of direction even harder because you think you're still going somewhere new because there's enemies to fight! Ah! I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not going insane. Oh my god! Right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let, let, let me let me just the way I needed to go. If you if you're gonna give me an option to fuck around and find out on this kind of separate side route that does this, whatever the fuck this is, and potentially leads me onto a entire. 10 minute fucking side tour of the level all over again. Maybe 
there was a switch. Never mind. My entire argument has just crumbled. There was a switch. The switch made me pull it. The switch made me think there was progress. I, I have no I have no leg to stand on anymore. The fucking key was right there. The only thing that stopped me noticing the key was that I didn't turn around and look at the key. It's happened. I've gone insane. It's happened. I've lost any semblance of sense. Oh, like this level is a giant cheese with many interconnected holes. I mean, that works with some games, but not this. Not with this level. Are you telling me I could have had a new weapon if I would have just stuck with this level? Uh, uh, I've had one new weapon this entire time and I could I could have I could have just soldiered on I don't understand how that even worked. <laughs> I don't even know how this works. All right, it crystallizes enemies. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Does it work over distance? Secondary does. It's a roller coaster. Roller coaster, baby. You just gotta you just gotta take the highs with the lows. Curves with the loop de loops. So Right. All right. Let me let me try and understand this. Enemy frozen. Okay. Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> it's it's got something going on. I can't entirely understand it, but I vaguely understand it, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> oh, man alive. Is it giving me ammo? I don't fucking know. I don't understand it at all. It's doing something, and I'm just gonna have to fucking deal with it. I do not get the rules of this weapon. It refracts through enemies sometimes, and maybe always, but not maybe quite. Yeah. Uh, 
Het is even helpen me daar. Oh, I'm so fucking done with this level. I got I got the friggin' artifact. I'm hoping that means the exit somewhere nearby. Because I, I do not want to play this level ever again. It is by far the most annoying level I've experienced so far. Again, I got I gotta stress this. It's it's not indicative of the entire thing. The rest of it is great. The rest of it I think is really enjoyable. But fucking hell. This level can go do one. It just, it, it, it's just outstayed its welcome so hard. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? The fuck? What the? What the? The fucking what? The fuck is that? I got one health. I'm, I'm so screwed. Zeki, you can bunny hop, you know? Really? No! In a Quake-derived game? No! You, 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 you're shitting me. You're shitting me. I'm not into scat. You should stop shitting me. Ah, fuck it, I'm leaving. Ah. Anyway, great game. Would in, would would uh, endorse. Very nice. Very fun. Uh, hate that fucking level. Hate that level. That level. Never. Never. No. No. Me personally. No. Never. Never wanna. Hate it. Sucks. Every other level. Pretty enjoyable. Every other level. Bar that one. So far. Hmm. But if we're going to take it as a whole, right, that's not a bad kind of metric. So if, if we consider how many levels were in the first hub, five, I've played, you know, I, I enjoyed the majority of the levels in the first hub. So that that's five for five. And then out of these, I've played three, two, and then one I didn't enjoy. So, you know, that's uh, one out of eight. That's pretty good going. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good ratio, all things considered. Anywho Every level level every game needs a layer of the blind ones. I I'll, this is gonna sound shocking to some of you, but Turok 2, layer of the blind ones, I don't think I really had that much trouble with. I don't think I had that much trouble with it. I don't think I had as much trouble with that level as I did with that level. That's saying something. But every, you know, every once in a while a game has that one spike. That one little... That one little 
pressure point. Just a little squeeze. Sends you over the edge. The opium. You just found my channel. Some, what is that? Some Italian content I'm making now. <laughs> Molto bene. Anyway, I have to call it for tonight. Regardless of if you just joined, I apologize. I'm sorry. I got. I gotta go eat some food. <laughs> Otherwise, the alcohol is really going to do a freaking number on me. In any regard, I hope you've enjoyed today's stream. And I hope you join me for future ones. Feel free to follow. Feel free to like. Subscribe. Uh, please, by all means, throw money at me. Don't feel compelled, but please, throw money at me. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Until next time. This has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. You should play Wrath. It's very good. Icarus out.